Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As you saw in the last video, we tried to put the 2J in the 180. Didn't work too well, and uh, we already pulled it back out. We're gonna pull the turbos off. We're gonna pull off everything we don't need. We might paint the block, and a lot of vacuum stuff that we're gonna delete. So we're gonna go get some, some vacuum caps and some block paint, stuff like that from the store. We ordered a turbo manifold. We got a waste gate. We got a hot side for my 3582 since the one on there is huge. We're gonna work on pulling everything off of the exhaust side of the motor, all the brackets, the turbos and stuff like that, the oil lines, the drain lines. So we're gonna start on that and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, got the turbos off. Kind of a pain in the ass, but nothing we can't handle. That would totally suck doing that in the car. So I'm glad we did it outside the car. Anyways, got everything off. Now I'm gonna start cleaning up the block. I'm actually gonna go to the auto parts store to grab some uh, some uh, high heat paint. And then uh, we'll clean down the block, paint it. You know, we'll wire wheel a few things and then we'll just get this side of the block looking pretty. Then we'll flip the stand around and we'll start working on the other side. So I just got home to this box sitting at the door and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. So I'll give you uh, my first initial reaction because this was the cheapest 2JZ GTE manifold I could find on eBay. So I don't really have high expectations. I was hoping it would just uh, bolt to my motor and then I could slap a turbo on it. So. Let's see, EMUSA Racing. Let's check it out. Pretty decently packaged, exhaust gaskets. Didn't get a vent or anything like that, straight as an arrow. That's good. What else we got? Oh man, I'm not gonna wrap this, I'll be right back. Not bad for a cast log manifold. So I did get a cast log manifold because uh, A, they're cheaper and B, they uh, take up a lot less room and you don't really need those nice manifold to make just, you know, decent power. These, I mean, these are told to make around six, up to 600 horsepower, but I'm only gonna have, I don't know, 350 to 450. So, um, initial thoughts. Looks very good. I thought I, there was gonna be like a lot of, like metal. I thought I was gonna have to get a Dremel and come in here and clean these holes out, but the, actually everything's in really good shape. This is a T4 flange. And uh, this is my turbo right here, I have it taken apart. This is a Garrett GT3582R. And I have it taken apart because this hot side is a T3, so it won't fit. This exhaust housing is huge. If you guys know anything about exhaust housings, this is a 1.06, um, that's huge. It's like drag, drag style. Probably gonna go slap this on the motor real quick. And it's actually pretty freaking heavy, cast iron. This log manifold, good investment. Looks perfect. This is a 0.82 T4 housing. I'm having a really hard time opening this with one hand, but you know what, I'm gonna keep you at it. So it comes with new clamp, new bolts. You can already have them. I'm on it with one hand, I'm on it. Okay, woo, man, this is nice. This is really nice. It doesn't even say, it doesn't have any writing on it or anything, wow. Oh man, look how good that looks. Kind of a terrible angle, but as you guys can see, I got this 3582 just kind of uh, fitted on this log manifold. You know what I like about this? There's a lot of room. This manifold leaves a lot of free space and I gotta order a downpipe. I just don't know which one to use, so I'll probably just buy one and then modify it slightly. I'm way excited to see this in the car. I might just throw it in there real quick. So I'm trying to get some work done on my damn car. Not a lot of people keep showing up, but they brought alcohol, so it's good. Yeah, you know, it's Friday, dude. We're here to enjoy, you know, 
time, people, and take a break from all this right now. Because <laughs> we're done, you know what's funny? When you got here, he's like, yeah, bro, let's work on your car. We're going to put the motor in. We put the motor in. What do you need to do to it now? We don't. Yeah, just literally, we're, we're gonna. St I'm oh, just gonna stare at it. We don't have a throttle bearing. That's right. That's yeah. Right. So, gotta, you so, can't. so the motor is in. Uh -huh. We still gotta figure out where we're gonna clock the turbo, but I think I want to put it like this so you can see the Gary logo. Yeah. No, no, stop. Don't. 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 Seriously. It, come on. It's, it's an investment. Investment. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the motor's in. It actually fits really good, and it looks like I can buy a generic downpipe. <laughs> so yeah, I think our generic downpipe will fit, and hopefully it will work. But that's it for today. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna pull the motor back out and then I'm gonna paint the block. I need to order a turbo link kit. Anyways, we'll see you tomorrow. Man, so all this and the camera didn't even start recording. So, uh, yeah. I wire wheeled the side of the block. I taped off all the important things. I didn't do a great job, but this ain't a beauty pageant, so. Oh yeah, I also polished the valve cover. Doesn't look the best, but it's shiny. On my Lexus, I did the left side when I did my single turbo conversion, so I wanted to uh, wanted to keep it uniform. I'll probably do the other side in like four years, just like I did with that one. I got gloss black right here. The only reason why you get engine paint is because it's high temp. This block gets pretty hot, so we're gonna start spraying it. Also, I shoved newspaper in all the holes just so I didn't get paint in there. It doesn't really matter, but you know, it only took a minute. Guys, I'm back. So we let the motor dry while I ate dinner, and then uh, I think it's good enough. We're gonna take the tape off because this tape sucks. I couldn't find my blue tape. We leave this tape on too long, it has a really sticky residue it leaves behind. So hopefully, it ain't bad. But hey. here's it. Wow, all right, not bad. Not bad for never doing anything the right way. Looks pretty good. Probably need to do another coat of polish on the valve cover. But, oh man, I don't know if you guys saw this, but don't like stitches, you don't gotta look. Check that out. Three stitches, you stupid motor. I'll pick back up when we get to the other side. And the single turbo is on. So um, everything's bolted up and torqued. The manifold is torqued. The turbo is torqued to the manifold. I got the gaskets in there. And I was checking out my wastegate. My wastegate is on. And it barely, barely clears the motor mount. Like barely, I'm talking like, I got an eighth of an inch to spare. So, um, we're still trying to figure out which way we're gonna clock it. I have my screamer pipe in the mail and of course it is running late So I'm not really sure. I think I'm just gonna leave it loose for now. I'll probably leave it like that run the screamer pipe right here in between The down pipe and the manifold because it's all hot anyway, so it doesn't matter So I'll just run the screamer pipe all the way up to here. Hopefully depending how long it is I'll just chop a hole in the hood let it come out uh, down pipe still working on that See what else? Oh yeah, we got to do the oil lines and the water lines. Now this has been a pain in the ass because um, I did order a kit that I, same kit I ordered for my 1J, it worked fine for my 1J, but nothing is working on this motor. The feed is still in the mail because uh, it needs to be a special size and it has a restrictor in it because this is a dual ball bearing turbo. So that's in the mail, it should be here today. And then I ordered the water line fittings that came today that of course, uh, I gotta order more parts because I thought they were dash six. So I ordered dash six line. As you can see, here's dash six. And look how big these puppies are. These are like dash eight because dash 10 is too big. So I'm assuming they're dash eight. So I gotta order, I don't know, five feet of dash eight. So I have these. Also came with this red 90 and this red straight. I don't need a 90, so I ordered another straight. So now I have two straights. And then I ordered this vibrant oil drain. She was like 25 bucks, but it will fit the bottom of my turbo perfectly. So that's good. That fits good. We don't gotta worry about that. So 
What we need to do now is cut our oil return to the pan. We need to cut it down. Stupid washer. We need to cut it down and put the fittings on. We'll get that on. So now we're gonna put the oil lines and try to get the water lines on the turbo. Pull my towel wastegate off the motor, kind of looking at what the spring is I want to try out. There's a bunch of different combinations, but I was going to go for eight pounds because of my transmission, but I think I'm just going to go for 10. I don't want to make anything over 400 horsepower. Shoot. Well, this is the 10 pound springs right here, the red and the green. So I could put these in and risk it or I could just go eight pounds and save my tram. You know what? <sighs> this is tough. Okay, I'm gonna put the eight pound in. Okay guys, the motor's just about finished up. Um, I'm actually waiting for a few parts in the mail, so I'm not gonna be able to put those on, but I just need the oil feed fitting. So I got the oil line ready to go. I'm also waiting on some vacuum caps. So we can cap these up. Actually, I might use this for the brake booster, but we can cap up all the other vacuum lines that we're not using. What else? The motor's just about ready to get made it to the transmission and put in the car. Got the oil return line came out really good. I kind of stripped the fittings, but it's okay. Got that in. The return line's looking good. It's looking good up there. Water lines, I'll give you an update on that. Tried shaving it down a lot ended up not fitting in my dash six line so i'm gonna have to find different fittings so that was a waste of money so now my jay-z is ready now we had converted to single turbo this is a garrett gt 3582r and then i have my shady log manifold i got for 100 bucks on ebay and then we have a tile 44 millimeter wastegate oh yeah we ended up putting an eight pound spring they're really easy to change all you have to do is pull the v-band off and change it out. I was gonna do 11 pounds, but I really don't wanna blow my transmission. I wanna enjoy the car until I can get a better trans. Since it's gonna be on spring pressure, you need to put it to the side of the gate, and then you need to cap the other two lines, and then the top of the gate, you're just gonna leave open. See that, and then that is gonna leave open for ventilation, and then, yeah. So now we should hopefully get less than 10 pounds because I know it's not going to be exactly I think it's it's I think it's 7.8 pounds or something like that so hopefully we get under 10 pounds to this thing and yeah we got the vacuum line running it's a really really thick vacuum line so I think it'll be okay that I zip tied it to the coolant line so kind of comes out using the bar fitting it goes up and around and then I have it on my heater core bypass line and then I bent this down a little bit it goes to here and then it goes right to the manifold so that's how we're going to be controlling our wastegate if i wire wheel this side of the intake manifold looks a lot better kind of tried to do something here looks whatever we pretty much cleaned everything up i polished one valve cover the motor is ready for the trans ready for the car so hopefully the next video we can get everything in the fuel lines in get the motor all bolted in and hopefully we can do a first test fire Okay guys, we're done with this video. We just converted our 2JZ to a single turbo. Next video, stay tuned. We're gonna do a full swap guide on how to put a JZ in an S chassis. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. This is Ice Runner Garza from Slide Mod 5. I'm out. Peace.